Don't try to sneak into your room like that. I know what you've got behind your back. Records. More no records. Well, I finally got to go to Jerry's Records in Pittsburgh, because I'm in Pittsburgh, to go to Iron Mountain to visit uh, UMG's uh, tape storage facility. We're going to have a great tour tomorrow, but today I'm visiting Jerry's Records and my microphone got screwed up, so none of the pithy comments I made on the actual video were recorded. Nothing. It's, uh, it's, thank God this wasn't Munich. Thank God this wasn't <laughs> Switzerland. This was just Jerry's record. So, but I'll take you on the tour, and I'll try to narrate as, as well as I can. So <clears throat> these are the steps up to Jerry's. A lot of people probably can't make it up those steps who <laughs> try, but uh, I did okay getting up the steps. Now, uh, this is a big record store, <clears throat> very, very big, and you're just getting to see the beginning of it. So first I, uh, I was looking for Chris, because Chris is the new owner, because Jerry, Jerry passed away last year, and uh, Chris showed up a little bit later in the video. So what they have behind the desk are collectible records, so they put some of the more collectible records there. And I asked about uh, the Abbey Road that was there. So you see Nathan Davis up there on the right? Uh, he was a Pittsburgh a native, so, and that's a very collectible Nathan Davis record. So uh, there's an original 72 Nuggets, and um, there's an, a British Abbey Road there, so I wanted to see that, but it turned out to be it's a green Abbey Road. Uh, so once I found that it was green, I knew it wasn't an original pressing. It was a UK pressing, and I didn't want to see it. Thank you. And then I started walking around, and this store is enormous. Look at the size. This is You're only seeing part of the store here. They don't sell any new records at Jerry's. It's all, it's all used records. And so I just started walking down the aisle, and um, you know, you'll see what I, what I saw. Jackie Wilson was great. I probably should have bought one of those Jackie Wilson records, but I didn't. I probably should have bought... Stevie Wonder's uh, Secret Life of Plants. That's a great record. I don't, I don't have that. And I also don't have uh, his other album, uh, Musiquarium. I, I probably should get both of those. So this is kind of like the soul section here. And those are the best soul. So they put the best sellers in one place. Like on the left there, you'll see, maybe we won't get over there, but against that left wall, they have the best sellers. And it's a lot of classic rock is there. And so I, I, there's really so much here that you could, your, your mind could get boggled very quickly. So when you go into a store like this, you really have to bring a list. If you're smart, you bring a list. Because if you don't, what ends up happening is whatever was on your mind will, <laughs> will quickly dissipate and, and you won't remember what you, what you were thinking. So there's the, the Dean and the Sammy and the Frank. I did a quick reconnoiter, and uh, the vocalist section. Oh, here's a whole other room, and this is the jazz room, and the jazz room is huge too. There was not a lot of great stuff in the jazz room. I mean, all, all of the, you know, all the Coltrane's are sold out. All the Mileses are pretty much sold out. Um, there's still a lot of good records. You just have to. No, you're not going to get, even at any price, you're not going to get, if you're looking for the top Miles Davis records or the top Coltrane or the top Ornette Coleman or the, in fact, there are probably very few there. There's still a lot of good records. And uh, so I just had a quick reconnoiter through this section. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I had a lot of funny things to say, but <laughs> none of them got recorded. Not, not even. So, I went over to the Bill Evans section at one point to see what was there. Art Farmer section. Um, Bill Evans. So, there's one record, then that the other Bill, you know, the other the Bill Evans, the saxophone player. He was, I think there were more Bill Evans, the saxophone player record in there than Bill Evans, the piano guy. You can see, not, not much great, but a lot of interesting records nonetheless. And the prices were really, really good. 
So you could fill in a collection. Th this would not be they had a VPI 16.5. This would be not, not a great place at this point to go to uh, buy an essential collection, at least in the, in the jazz section. And y you'll see later on in the, in the rock section, there, there, was, there were a lot of good rock records. And there were good soul records too, actually, at, at reasonable prices. And you might see some rec oh, is it? you might see some records in there that you'd be interested in, but I don't know what you're interested in, so I can't say. A lot, a lot of records. So uh, is it Chick Corea? Chick Corea record, and the prices really are very, very good. You could put together a secondary jazz collection for not too much money, if you know what you want. I wanted to try to get a, I'm trying to get, I have some okay original copies of Bill Evans' Jim Hall Undercurrent, which is a great record. You know the story with that, Ambassador Sat. She's, what's in that valise there is a, about two pounds of marijuana that uh, his dealer had just brought him before he set off on his European tour. I know that for, for a fact. It was confirmed by uh, uh, Terry Teachout, who was no longer with us. He was a professor, and uh, he knew the story of that. Just checking the Lewis section. Not the great Louis Armstrong records that you want. Uh, not a lot of Pablo's there, not a lot of... Um, certainly, I didn't see any Riversides. I didn't see any... I didn't see a lot of really fantastic records. It, well, that's not what this record store is about. But I went through the Dean section, and I did find, you'll see it in a minute, I did find, oh, wait, I, there must have been another Dean section that I found, <laughs> I found something. You'll see that in a few minutes. There's a soul section. I know a lot of people watching this are saying, God, I, I wish I could stand there and go through records and see what's there. It's like a silent movie, and I can't put up the subtitles either because uh, I don't have any. Timbuk3, I interviewed them once. It's a husband and wife couple. They were fun to interview. I did it for Music Connection magazine. Many years ago. So now I'm repeating some of the things I said into the camera. Uh, David Van Tegum had a couple of records out. Percussionist. I really, I really just perused. You know, I didn't, I didn't go into a, do a deep dive because I didn't have that much time. I was with Mark Feiner from Communications Research. Some of you know him. Mark Feiner was. Oh, Dan Hicks. They, that's a good Dan. That's a great record. I think it was five bucks. You cannot, that's a great sounding record too. Uh, live album. And that's a pretty good record. And that's a really good record. And that's an okay record. That was good. So I was with Mark Feiner from Communications Research. Mark Feiner was hired by Sony when, when the compact disc came out. He was one of the people that organized the publicity and the, the, the uh, PR for, for the compact disc. So it's funny because Mark and I were kind of on opposite sides of the of the fence, and uh, but we didn't. There's Happy Organ, Baby, Dave, Baby Cortez, do 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 do, and um, now we're he's working uh, with the Vinyl Alliance, I think, or certainly involved in, in the vinyl resurgence because he he's he's a very good uh, not just public relations. He does consult consulting. He's a very good consultant. He's a strategist, that's the best way to put it. And uh, he's going to go to Iron Mountain with me tomorrow. That's going to be fun because uh, I'm going to go there and they're going to show me the tape vault. So we're going to look at all the tapes that were supposedly destroyed in the Universal Fire that weren't. And uh, one of the things I asked them to do was let's make believe that I am doing a reissue, that I have licensed a title from a UME, UMG, however you want to call them, and uh, what would happen if I licensed the title 
and it was given to someone in the vault to uh, get the tape out. And uh, I want to see what happens if they get the tape out and they uh, make a, uh, a dupe of it, an analog dupe of it to, to give out, or if they prepare it to actually send the original master tape out, which they will do on occasion, or if they digitize it uh, to present for a reissue. Exactly how they do that, and what happens with the artwork. Do they have artwork on the premises, or do they have to scan an original pressing? So those are among the things that uh, we're going to see tomorrow. And, uh, you know, Iron Mountain is outside of Pittsburgh, and it's a... Um, it's a facility where the government also stores records. No top secret things. Well, uh, probably are top secret things there, but um, not in the bathroom. And um, they have, I think Sony's there also. So uh, there are major labels there and a lot of government storage and, rec you know, less, more mundane storage. So this is, employees only are allowed to look, anybody's going to look through this. I wanted to see the Joan Armour trading record. And then they kept walking through the pop and rock section, the Springfields, Stephen Sills Live, John Stewart. I got to know John Stewart. He was in the Kingston Trio. He wrote uh, which song? Did he, he wrote a song for the Monkees. Must have made a lot of money on that Monkey song. Was it Pleasant Valley Sunday? I, I, I forgot which one it was. Stories. One version of that record has the hit Louis Louis on it, Louis Louis, whatever it's called, and the other one doesn't. Super cramp. I don't know what that was. And I don't know why I picked it up either, but I did. That look at that cover. I mean that's let's dress you up in every cliche of the early eighties new wave scene. Ten CC always had great covers. Uh Austin Hilly three thousand Mark Three, I had one of those. It's a miracle I survived. Bunch of good 10cc records. There's a story behind that. I just read the story behind that sheep that was on there. Uh, it was a story about the company that did the cover art. They had a, they actually flew to Australia or New Zealand to get that particular kind of sheep. And, and the picture didn't come out good, so they actually had a Photoshop. Well, they didn't Photoshop, whatever they did in those days to make up for Photoshop. Raindrops keep falling on my head. There's uh, Joey Travolta, that's John's brother, I guess. And there's John Travolta in a very famous picture. Was, you know, like, he's all dressed up and, well, dressed down, actually. He had no clothes on to dress up. Uh, let's see, what else we're looking through stuff here. I bet you you're, that's a good Winwood collection there. I bet you you're seeing a lot of records you've never before seen. I did. I saw a whole lot of records I've never seen before. And a lot of records I would never want to see again, actually. And a radio section, a sound effects section, a, yeah, realistic sound effects. In New York, that's a good record. Melton made songs in New York, but that's not the original pressing. The original pressing sounds really good. That one doesn't sound so good. Let's see. Oh, that's a very funny record. Peter Ustinov talks about the, uh, the Rock of Gibraltar uh, car race, the Grand Prix of the Rock of Gibraltar. Obviously, you can't have a, a, a Grand Prix on the Rock of Gibraltar, but he, he did it. It's a very funny record. I've got a copy at home. Hollies, Jets Hotel, Ry Cooter. That section we're in right now, that, that's the hot seller in the rock world. So all the records on that wall are like where the guys come in to buy classic rock records. That's the wall they would start out at because those are all the good records all on that wall. I went through the new arrivals later. There wasn't that much really. This is a Sunday afternoon, you know, so the store wasn't that crowded. Perusing the soul section. I mean, 
there are, I don't know how many records are there, but there's probably a million records there. 990,000 of which you might not know or want. But there's also a lot in the back. You have to, you have to tell them what you want, and they, they know if they have it in stock. Because you, you saw the walls are full of records. I think they've got a pretty good handle on what's up there. Uh, phase four. That's what audiophile nerds like me, when they were kids, would buy these phase fours because they sounded so good, even, even if the music was really horrible. The international section. I think we'd go into the classical section now. Let's see. See, now you're walking into a whole nother room. Oh, vocalists? Yeah, and now the, the classical section was amazing. There were a lot of great records in the classical section. I really should have gone through more of them, but in the classical section, if you want to put together a, a really nice uh, basic repertoire of classical music, you could do that uh, with very good, like that, black and gold, Telefunken, lo, the, all those Bach records are fantastic sounding too. I've got a lot of these actually. People who know more about this than I do. Rejoice in the Lamb. Matt. It's a pleasant. I saw that performed live actually, the War Requiem. Uh, not, not fun listening actually. Just a huge, huge collection of classical records. And a lot of good ones. A lot of archives, DGGs, a lot of uh, errata boxes. Yeah. See, actually, there was. Um, I did get, what happened with the sound is I had an external microphone and I had it in my pocket and I thought I had turned it off because there are four microphones built into the, the gimbal thing that I use and I thought I had that turned off but actually it was turned on so what it really sounded like was, uh, well, I'm not going to play for it, it was a mess, really sorry about this but um, I'm pretty much saying what I, w what I was saying there and it's more about what you're looking at than anything. Archives, DGGs, Londons. You could you could put, you could put 50, 50 great records together easily and start a classical collection. I was looking through Mahler and Wagner. I was trying to find the Ring Cycle, but they didn't have any of the ones. You know, we, d we just published a, a fantastic Mark Ward uh, part one of a multi-part thing on, on the ring. That it's an absolutely phenomenal piece of scholarship because you will learn more about the history of the ring and the history of opera and the history of Wagner, and it's, it's mind-bogglingly good. Deserves to win a Grammy or an Emmy or something. I'm just happy to be able to publish it. Is a, a Mercury. If you want to hear British band classics, I'm not sure everybody wants to hear British band classics, but if you did, there it is. And there's the new arrivals. I did not really go through the new arrivals. I should have. I'm sure there's some really great things there. Some erratos. You just wonder where these records came from. Who had these records? Some of these are unusual, unusual titles. Who had these records and how did they end up at Jerry's Records? Oh. It's probably a nice Harmonia Mundi. I don't know that one. 
I think I looked at it to see if see who engineered it, but I didn't actually see it. Oh, these are new arrivals from Duquesne, three dollars a piece. Wow, that's from the school. I guess the school. That's a nice Schubert unfinished. I have that one. These came out of a college collection, obviously. I just, I, 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 at this point, I was probably starting to get uh, dizzy going through all these. This is the Glenn Gould section. There's Bach and Handel arias with Flagstad and uh, Sir Adrian Bolt. London Blueback. It's like this is, you're watching a silent movie and I'm talking over the silent movie. I should probably add music in the background. But I'm not gonna. I want to have a good class of collection. Give me 20, 25 records I should have. Or to Rubenstein. Where's Mozart? He's hiding. That's a joke. Okay, and those, uh, all of those up there, telephone that's up there, are really, really, it's a nice, really nice series. It's, it goes on forever. Okay, and then I came out of there, and I got, I went into, okay, so that is a weird, that's Michael Tilson Thomas with Sarah Vaughan, uh, recorded live, that's, I don't know what, I have that record, it's a really weird recording, something's really off with that record, I don't know what it is, I don't know what happened, but, go back to the Mel Torme section, that's a good directed disc. Mel Torme and Francis Faye doing Porgy and Bess. I don't. I think I could pass on that. I almost bought that. I really like Mel Torme, and uh, that that one was Tom Dowd recorded that one at some club, and it was a green and blue label, but ultimately it looked weird. It, it the condition looked kind of weird. It was cheap, but. I didn't do it. And more mills, more mills, more mills. Okay. Next. Ah, there it is. Dream along with Dean. This is the, you know there was a copy of of the record that uh, Analog Productions reissued. And there was an original copy. There were two. One was mono. Obviously, you want the stereo one because it's such a nice stereo recording. So I opened it up. And I guess, I, do I have not have it on camera? Oh, I don't It was an original uh, pink and green steamboat label jacket. So I took that and I bought that. That's one record I bought. No doubt, if you're bored at this point, you can just turn this off. You can turn this off at any time. Home or Jeff, whatever. I went through the country section a little bit just to see what was it. Those two guys are in Congress now. Uh, let's see what else is here. Back to the jazz section again. It didn't get any better the second time, second time I went through it. Guess what? It was still the same stuff. Oh, there's, there's the Andre Prev and West Side Story. It's, I, now I see it. The Andre Prev and West Side Story that was just reissued by... It's so weird. I see it in the video. I didn't see it live. It escaped me, but then I saw it in the video. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I love you. 
I think I have it anyway. I've got an original contemporary, so we just reviewed that on the website. And let's see where we're going now. Into the Jerry Mulligan section. I, always, I think I have that Jerry Mulligan Chili Man or former record. I think I have it. I want to live, Susan Hayward, but I didn't buy it. That's a good record. I have a stereo cover of that. And. That's good, Drew. That's a good record. Not an original. Kept walking through. While you're there, you know, as long as you're there, you might as well keep keep looking. I don't know why I was looking through the Bobby Hackett section. Frankly, I don't know, but I was. Chico Hamilton. I was looking for some Chico Hamilton records. There's. There's a couple where it's really Charles Lloyd, because he played with Chico Hamilton, and he, it was actually his record. But these, none of these were them. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna edit this video because it's getting a little bit crazy. Grammar, how yes, you doing? I'm, I'm Chris, I'm the owner. Hi Chris, you want to see on camera? Sure. So, how long have you been working here? Um, working here for, since about 2009, owned it for almost six years. Oh, you, you, are, are you bought it? Yeah, yeah. From the family? Yeah, Jerry retired in yeah. 2017 and yeah. I bought it, yep. How's business? It's good. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Minor resurgence. Uh, definitely full swing here. Definitely seems that way. And young yeah. people that go to school around here, they kind of come in here. Yeah, water. definitely. A lot of college kids from Oakland. Yeah, from yeah. CMU. And what do they buy most? What do they buy? Yeah, classic rock or are they into? Yeah, I mean, probably predominantly classic rock. Yeah. You know, everyone wants rumors. Everyone wants Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, that kind of thing. But I mean, you know, I'd save that for the you know the younger. Yeah. Crowd, right? Like, obviously, we have collectors of all ages that come in here and very taste. Do the old people have trouble getting up the steps? Sometimes. You carry some of those stairs for them. I, I have <laughs> helped people up and down yeah, the stairs. So. We also have a back door. If we need to, we can help them up that way. Yeah. That way, at least yeah. it's not no stairs. But, yeah. Do you have special events here ever? Like, uh, no concerts or anything. There's not there's no room. It's special sales? Sometimes. Um, sometimes we do. Yeah, like record store day, usually we do a big dollar sale. So we, yeah. we amass. 10, 20,000 records, and we help hold it downstairs, so it's just a big dollar sale. Where but you don't, sell, you don't bring new records in here, right? No, it's all used. Yeah. Yeah. Are there new record stores around here? That... Yeah, uh, there's there's more stores than you would think. There's yeah. 10 plus stores, I would say. In and do you ever do, since you are a used store, not a new store, do you ever do like cooperative events with, with the new stores for any, any reason? Or... Really? I mean, we can. <laughs> That's one thing we probably should be a little more, you know, uh, more of a community basis, sure. You know, yeah, I, I find it helps. You know, I came back. I came back from uh, from making vinyl. You know, the event that was in uh, there was like uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing some of this job. I can't remember where it was. <laughs> where was it? Uh, making vinyl. It was in uh, Minneapolis. Uh, that's and where I'm from originally. Yeah, it, it was a really great event. Okay. And you, you have new, you bring new records out on a certain day. People know they come on a certain day. Every day. No, we put stuff out every day. I try not to, uh, so people like me come here every day. That's how I started coming here. Yeah, I worked at the Baker at the street every, every every day after work, come yeah. down here, check out what was new, and yeah, that's kind of a... That's what I did when I lived in L.A. I was here every day. Where you at? New Jersey. Yeah. All right, so... Especially looking at the new releases. Yeah, so we have, um, we also have our kind of more collectible stuff up front. So, like, a lot of that nice jazz stuff will end up up there. Yep. Um, you know, stuff on the wall, too. But every section has its own new rivals and uh, rock new rivals. I should put the data in a little bit. But the good stuff behind it. This is kind of a more collectible stuff. They got an 18th grade instruction. Yeah, no, that's an original. Um, huh. 
dollar record, but there's a rare record. Oh, kids, okay, this is the most sought after. Yeah. 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 Obviously, if we get more of them in Pittsburgh, then uh, we're probably going to be local. But, well, that's uh, right. That's, yeah. right. that's why he's local. Yep. And, and he, and he uh, taught here? Yes, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was the head of the jazz department. That's he right. Later, he came. And that's starting with a great movie, Prima Red. That's a great record. Yeah. That's a great record. Uh, that's a great record. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, let's see. I want to look at all the older. Is this really not because he's a new arrival? Or is this yeah. really not so, this is just kind of our honestly 20 and up price point kind of stuff, right? Which we consider our more collectible stuff. Um, new arrival for rock is down there, new arrival for, for soul is near the soul section. We kind of try to put the new arrival section somewhat near this. Yeah, but this is just kind of our more collectible. Exclusive. They didn't put their name on the cover. They thought they were the Beatles. But I think that's Crabby Appleton. Now, this is a great sound of record, by the way. The sound of this record, Crimson Clover on this record, is absolutely insane. It's $6. So come down here if you're in town, get this record, and play Crimson and Clover, and you'll absolutely love it. Jeffrey's records are not expensive here. And these are good records. These are really good. Answer. German person. That's a good record too. These are inexpensive. Go on Jeffrey's records at five bucks. If you don't know Garland, check. Copy of Trafalgar is eight dollars. Another great record.
such a good one. I sound a Sexorama, sung by Miss Z. Carol D. Bayer. Oh, I got this. I've got a story. Two copies. Of that, by the way. How do they get two copies? <laughs> 
Thank you. 